Hey, you're watching a small video from my larger course. If you do want the bigger course, there'll be a link just down here somewhere. Hey, in this video, we're gonna look at the five phases uh, for being a UX designer. Now, the first is setting the objectives, then it's doing the research, making a mock-up, doing some testing, and then doing the actual build. So the objective is the most important part. That's the bit where you just gotta make sure you're asking the right question. Um, it might be for your own work, it might be for a client's work, it's just coming back to them and saying, um, is this, you know, does this align with your business goals? I've done lots of things in the past where I've done a project, got to the end of it and realized, although it was lovely and it looks good and it works, it hasn't got me any closer to where I wanted to be, okay? So making sure at this um, at this time, whether it's with your client or with yourself, is just asking yourself, does this get me closer um, to where I wanna be? Does this align with my business goals? So once you've got the kind of question clear, then it's setting your hypothesis. And make sure you set a hypothesis and use the right kind of language for that, rather than setting things like goals or uh, targets. Um, because setting a hypothesis, uh, say a hypothesis would be, uh, will existing clients pay for photography courses from me? Okay, that would be one of my hypotheses for um, creating a photography course. Now, instead of just saying, I wanna create a photography course, the problem with that is um, I wanna sell photography courses, there is a yes or no, like there's a fail or, um, or, a, or a success there. Okay, and you can get really dejected when um, I've launched things and you're like, great, it's definitely gonna work and it doesn't. And the people that worked on the project and myself all get a bit disheartened by the whole thing. Whereas if you change the language to, I will, you know, I will test my hypothesis that existing clients, you know, the, the goal of it is to test, um, will, will the clients actually pay for this? Then you can't lose. Okay, whether it's yes or no, it doesn't matter. Your job is to figure out whether that's, you know, whether that'll happen or not. And so, you know, it's a win-win and it's a, it's a better language to have. So make sure when you are dealing with kind of setting goals, they aren't, um, you know, uh, all or nothing. Okay, so once you've got a hypothesis, then you're gonna move into the research phase. Now, um, only do they, they kind of like really impactful research. The, some people can get a little caught up in the research phase and spend ages making documents about what you should do. Um, do the stuff that's easy and relates to you. If you've got like say my projects that are launching new courses, I have a lot of data already on existing clients. I have a lot of web traffic that I can kind of get some research done quite easily to test some things. But say you've got something brand new, okay? It's a new feature for an app or it's a new app itself. Okay, there's not gonna be a whole lot of research you can do. So do it, um, but then move on to the mock-up stage and the testing stage is more important. Now for the mock-up, it's all about what's called the MVP. So the minimum viable product. What can you get going quickly and get tested? Okay, so you wanna to move to that test phase as quickly as you can. So your mock-up might be just wireframes. It might just be Photoshop flats. It could be Photoshop flats with a bit of Envision interaction. It might be Muse. It might be a, um, a reasonably um, interactive app. Okay, you might need that for an actual get a, you know, to get a good mock-up through to get tested. So it's up to you in the project, but make sure it's just enough. It doesn't have to be the best and prettiest with all the features, just the basics in that mock-up. Then once you move from the mock-up, and then it's the testing. Testing is definitely the phase where, as a UX designer, that's that's kind of like what, um, uh, you know, your employer or your client. It, this is the most value they get out of it. Okay, is actually seeing the testing and actually see people using this thing. Okay. And once the testing done, then you kind of loop back to mock-up and iterate on that mock-up, okay? Say you do some testing, there was, you know, there's gonna be problems, there's gonna be issues, there's gonna be things you didn't think about, and they're kind of looping back into that mock-up phase again. Once you've gone through and got something kind of working, okay, and tested as much as you can with the mock-up, then it's kind of working into the building process, actually making the thing. Now, um, don't feel like that's the end of your role as a UX designer. There's lots you can do once a feature's been launched or an app's been launched or a new product's been um, you know, uh, delivered. There's lots of that kind of continued testing and iteration that can go with live data. And okay, there's lots of things you can use to check and, and, and work on that. All right, so that's the five phases of being a UX designer. Objective, research, mock-up, test, and then the build. Hey, did you enjoy the course? If you wanna see the full, big, long, unedited version, there'll be a link just down here.